Uh, we're just talking about flying cars, maybe coming soon, the FAA approving them. But have you ever tried, you know, just flying a regular jet, commercial? Uh, ever try flying into Washington, D.C.? And specifically, maybe the Ronald Reagan Washington National Airport. It's, it's pretty pricey uh, to get a ticket to and fro the nation's capital. It doesn't matter if you're flying in from Detroit or New York or San Diego, Atlanta, Seattle, wherever. It's going to cost more if you need to get to D.C. And there's a lot of people who need to get to D.C. for a whole host of reasons, as you can imagine. Why is it so expensive? Well, there's this old law from the 1960s that sets up this perimeter at Ronald Reagan to ostensibly protect the other regional airports from losing business. You know, you got Dulles there, Virginia, you've got Baltimore, BWI as well. They're all competing for the Washington, D.C. traffic, apparently. But in reality, what this law does, it just really kind of limits the number of flights, which creates, of course, more demand. There's less supply. And that apparently makes the whole thing much more expensive. Uh, let's get into this right now. Brian Walsh, spokesman for the Capital Access Alliance, is joining us now. Brian, thanks for joining us here in the program. Nice to have you. Thanks for having me on. Happy to be on board. Well, so tell us the situation here. Kind of give us the premise of, of you're, you're absolutely opposed, it appears, to this old 1966 uh, law, I believe is when it was established, that really limits the amount of flights that can fly into Ronald Reagan. We are. So, and I thought you described the situation perfectly because Washington, D.C. has the highest domestic ticket prices in the country of, among all metro areas. And a big reason for that is this 1966 uh, law that Congress passed that artificially restricts the number of flights that can go in and out of Ronald Reagan Airport each day. So currently, Congress is considering a broader FAA reauthorization bill that comes up every five years. Our hope is to have an amendment included in that bill, and there's been bipartisan versions introduced in the House and the Senate. This is one of those rare issues that, that is actually not partisan in Washington. There's strong support in both parties for this. But because both Reagan and Dulles are federally owned facilities, Congress has oversight, and only Congress uh, can authorize an increase in the number of flights. And that's what we're hoping to do is add up to 28 more flights in and out of Reagan each day uh, that could go both in and beyond the perimeter to really add more add more supply to meet the tremendous demand that we're seeing in airports around the country. Uh, and and uh, Brian, how will this help uh, fly, uh, people who are flying out of, let's say, Detroit Metro Airport into um, Washington? Yeah, so, well, ostensibly, Detroit could be eligible for, for a new flight. Uh, what, what the bill does, though, is it authorizes up to 28 new flights, and it doesn't, it doesn't pick winners and losers among airlines. There's seven current airlines that, that operate out of, out of Reagan, or as would, uh, some people call it DCA. Mm -hmm. uh, each airline would be eligible for up to four additional flights. And so once... Congress gives that authorization, then the airlines would work with the FAA and the Department of Transportation like they do with every other airport in the country. Uh, so, but where I think everyone would benefit, if you, because as was said at the top, if you currently fly in and you know, fly to D.C., and like I said, you know, thousands of people from Michigan do that, whether it's to meet, you know, their policymakers, to tour the sites, you know, as you know, school groups uh, every spring uh, come to Washington, D.C., Anyone who travels here right now is paying the highest ticket prices in the country. Uh, and this would broadly uh, bring down, uh, we believe, up to $60 per ticket, according to a study from one of the top management consulting firms in the country. Yeah, that's a lot of money because we have, of course, members of Congress, but all sorts of people who fly in and out of D.C. on a weekly basis, probably twice a week, if not, not more often than that. So this is called the DCA Act. DCA is the code for Ronald Reagan. Um, what there there are some airlines out there who are not a, not not supporting this new act that you support, and like United Airlines and American Airlines, they're saying they're claiming that this would threaten some of the existing flights at these other airports, like at Dulles or at Baltimore, maybe some smaller regional airports. They say this is actually going to take away those flights there, and it's not fair to these other regional airports. What do you say to that? 
Yeah, so, you know, unfortunately, like everything in Washington, when you try to change the status quo, there's someone on the other side saying they like the way it is. And the reality is that United and American are, are opposing this for one reason, and they don't want more competition. Uh, United Airlines currently controls 70% of the gates at D.C.'s other airport, Dulles. Uh, American is the predominant carrier at DCA. And even though they would both gain from this bill, the life Delta and other airlines, they would each get four new flights. They are opposing this because they don't want competition on existing routes. And so because that's not really a winning political message to say you simply don't want more competition, they have made up this talking point that this would somehow impact current regional service. And I just encourage people to read the bill. It's in the House, it's HR 3185, and the Senate is uh, S 1933. And the bill is very simple. It's purely additive. It simply authorizes 28 new flights on top of existing flights. So it would have no impact on current service. It simply gives the airlines the opportunity to add four new flights elsewhere, whether it's to Detroit, Salt Lake City, or elsewhere. Uh, you know, like I said, air travel is is at is basically reaching pre-COVID levels in many areas. Mm -hmm. You know, ten times more people are flying than than you know, were in the 1960s when this bill was passed. And so, you know, there's what the you know simple economics show is that supply is not keeping up with demand, mm. and and this would uh, help everyone. You know, I, I know that you mentioned the the bipartisan support. You got guys like Mitt Romney, Mike Lee, John Ossoff. Henry Quay are all these uh, Democrats and Republicans supporting this. And I guess one thing I, I think needs to be cleared up. You said it's going to add 28 additional flights per day at Ronald Reagan, and it's not going to take away any other existing flights on the other airports. Can Ronald Reagan handle that many? Are they at capacity right now, or can they, they take on these uh, 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 more than two dozen additional flights daily? Uh, it can. We 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 have. There's been a few things out there. There's a, a study, 100 page study. It's on our website, capitalaccessalliance.com. It's capital with an A. Uh, there's a 100 page study on our website done by one of the top management consulting firms in the country, uh, and we also supplemented that with data from the FAA, which shows there's at least three time blocks during the day. You know, look, that that DCA is currently underutilized and has the capacity to add more flights. Um, you know, we, obviously, no one is looking to impact safety here. Safety is everyone's top priority. So these these new flights would not it'd work with the FAA on when to add them. You know, There are some areas in, during the day where DCA is currently busy. So it's not like you'd, you'd add those new flights during those, those hours. Um, but there, there are time blocks during each day where DCA has the ability to add flights. Well, I know you got a, a new ad campaign trying to bring awareness to this issue because I, I know for certain that it is very expensive to fly into Washington, D.C. My wife grew up in Bethesda, Maryland, so we use those airports uh, somewhat frequently. We wish that prices would come down. This seems like it might help do that. The DCA Act is what is being considered. Our guest is Brian Walsh, the spokesman for the Capital Access Alliance. Uh, good luck to you. I appreciate you joining us here. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Have a wonderful day.